you're not getting a hundred percent. Let's talk about it. Folks, welcome to the baseball brouhaha this week or World Series week here. We got a, two games under the belt. Game three is coming up here shortly, and uh, it's been good so far. Adam, I know you necessarily haven't necessarily sat down and watched every inning, but uh, what have been your impressions early going? Tight games, clutch performances. It's like what you want in an early mm-hmm. World Series um, getting things going mm-hmm. now. Dodgers are up 2 0. Feeling nervous about a four or five game series, which is not really what we want. No. We want to stretch it out. So, mm-hmm. but Yankees going home. Yeah. Going back to Yankee Stadium. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. I, I get to see, um, Game one, sit down with some friends and watch game one. And um, I jumped out of my seat with excitement at the end of that game, which I, you know, when it's not my team, I don't tend to do that. But it was a very exciting game, exciting moment. Freddie Freeman, big time, man. That was a clutch yeah. home run, uh, fun game. Uh, game two didn't quite have the all the drama, but you were close. Ninth inning, bases loaded. You're right there. Um, that's what you, that's what you want. You want tight games. Um, so it's been fun. I'm excited. Like you said, I want to go six, seven. You know, obviously the dream is to go seven, but um, um, but stretch it out. Good series. Looking for more. Looking forward to more. Looking forward to more. But uh, we're, that's not what we're talking about strictly today. You know, you see it in the way a baseball game develops. You see Freddie Freeman, health not 100%, hits a home run. He didn't get hit every time he came up. Judge struck out a bunch, you know. So we're talking about game of failure. And for me specifically, um, I'm studying for a big test. Certified financial planner, it's the area, my my field of expertise. And um, I got a big test coming up here in about 10 days or so. And you're, you study, you prepare. In general, I feel good. But I would love to get a 100%. But that's not reality. So, Adam, how do we cope with the fact we're not doing 100%? That's a great question. And and the 100% is not only about tests and batting averages. It's about there's also an element of like you don't always get what you want. Mm-hmm. And so you, how do you do it? You know, everybody like comes up with their different strategies, right? You have different Every, everyone has to make, push their way through it. Failure is a part of life. Not getting what you want is a part of life. And mm-hmm. it's about, there's so much that's in, it's, it's in here, folks. Mm-hmm. How do we talk to ourselves about what's going on mm-hmm. when yeah. we don't get 100%? Yeah. Yeah, and I, the other part of it that I think of too is not just that you don't get what you want, but like when you're going through life and at work, at home, parenting, you know, with your spouse, your partner, um, driving the car, you mess up. You don't get a hundred. You don't get it a hundred percent. I had a moment, a small one today, but it really aggravated me a lot. Was uh, we got we got a our first phone for the kids. Our oldest is going to be doing some babysitting uh, here in the not too distant future. And so we got a phone um, and I went to put on that little screen protector thing and I just botched it. It looks terrible. And I had to order a new one and it was, 
I was very frustrated actually, because I don't like dealing with that stuff. And I was not in a good space for a little bit. <laughs> I, I had to, <laughs> for something so minor, it just sent me over the edge a little bit, but I will say this. Real, my wife and I were both a little bit on the short of sleep. We had, we've had a kind of a, we'll talk probably more about it in weeks to come, but a little bit of a lot going on in our world. And then last night at midnight, uh, 1230, uh, one of our kids is waking up chucking the cookies. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so short night, <laughs> clean up the cookies. <laughs> so, uh, you know, all those things add up and you're, you're not a hundred percent, you're not a top of your game. What do you do? Yeah, and that's part of it too, as far as the hundred percent. It's like nobody's operating at their total best at all times. You got your days when you're feeling it, when you're not feeling it. And you know, like I've I've got, you know, Halloween questions coming up over here that I don't know the answer to. You know. Mm-hmm. Where are we going where are we going trick or treat? I don't know. You know, I don't, I don't want to go. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's always something that you're not sure you're prepared for. You deal with the with it the best you can. And I feel like this is a difference with um, baseball a bit is f- as far as like the 100%. Mm-hmm. You know, you hear about it so much if you're in the baseball world that, you know, you bat 300, which is 30%. Your Hall of Fame player, uh, but there's more to it than that. Like there's a there's a process that you repeat day after day after day after day, which doesn't necessarily get modeled the same way in like parenting. You know, there's there's no there's no batting practice for twelve thirty vomit. I'll tell you that. <laughs> so Adam, I feel like I'm tracking. Uh, with what you're saying about no batting practice, but that you took that in a direction I wasn't expecting. Can you expand on that? Why did you, why did you take us in that direction? Why do you feel like that was, that's so important to, as, as a part of this conversation? I'm, I'm thinking about like there, you think about like a professional athlete, they've developed a process Mm -hmm. and the, uh, a lot of the success is built on trust the process. Mm-hmm. And so if, yep. if I am focused on my swing or my arm angle or whatever, and I'm dialed into that repetitive motion over and over again, chances are over time, the uh, averages will win out. I'll be successful and whatever that means. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, that's not always the case, but you think about those players who are most successful, that's really what, what, um, so much of what that success is. Mm -hmm. And so I think about life, you know, like we, there, there are some things you compare, you can compare to a baseball game and the process of a baseball game. Um, and there's some things that you can't and, um, you know, so that, I think that's why I took it that direction a a little bit is we, uh, tend to, to not give ourselves as maybe as much grace as we should, you know, realizing that, you know, especially the parenting journey that we're on, there are so many things in our day-to-day life that you, there's no warm up for that. There's no practice for that. And here we are getting mad at ourselves and frustrated because I didn't get it just right. Well, how would you? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That That's really interesting point because I was thinking about it in terms of like baseball, like, being a hitter going up against a pitcher, it's really hard to hit and your success rates low 30% at best, basically. Um, you know, and 
you have like a full scouting report, you know, like they're, even if they beat you, you know, their tendencies, you know, what they like to throw. Um, some of the, you know, better pitchers are harder, much harder to um, perhaps um, have a playbook on, but you know what pitches they throw, you know, you know, um, you come into that prepared and there's some element of that in the, like for me, I, you know, obviously I, I've lived with my kids every, every day since, I mean, basically since they've been born. So I know certain tendencies and personality and things to watch out for, but, um, it's not, but like with your kids, you might get a new wrinkle or something else or a whole new element. We've been dealing with, um, some unexpected things with curriculum and our kids school that was like, felt like it was a bit out of left field, um, and that we're working through with the school and with our kids. And it's like, that's a whole nother like piece that sort of like, it's like, that was like, we went up to bat, uh, against a guy who's fastball slider and started throwing a splitter out of nowhere. And you're like, well, I, this guy, how, uh, what am I supposed to do with this? I haven't done with this before. Um, and so that, yeah, it's a, it's a great point. Um, it's, it's tough. It's hard because I think part of the thing is that when we fall short, when we fail, quote unquote fail, like it feels off. Like it feels like I really blew it or I really blew it this time or whatever. We've talked about this a little bit, but, um, but that hundred percent is just, it, it's, it'll, it'll eat you alive. Um, and it's like, it's one of those things too, maybe you could speak to this a little bit as well, but I'm thinking about the test. Like the goal is a hundred percent, but you have to know you're not, you, you have to be okay with the fact you're not going to get it. And in my test prep, even they talked about this, like some people, um, fail because like actually fail the exam. They don't hit even the minimum standard in part because they got one wrong. They thought they should have known it, but they forgot something. And then they just got stuck on that one thing and it just threw them off for the whole rest of the test. So um, we can get in that space as well. Yeah, we can. Perfectionism is, uh, is a real thing that people struggle with. Um, though, you know, I'm, I'm listening to you talk about this test that you have and I think you say a hundred percent's the goal. Mm -hmm. I think you might think that, but I don't think you actually believe that. No, I you're, think, I think no. if you were presented the option, well, I'll present it to you right now, Aaron, mm -hmm. would you rather have a hundred percent or like, like if, if a hundred percent, but, um, for whatever reason, you don't get to be a financial planner or uh -huh. you pass the test at less than a hundred percent and you get to do the practice. What would you yeah. take? Well, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. It's, it would be the, you know, the pass of what I need to do. So, um, I think it's the like the, the preparation, you do the preparation. I think what I'm trying to say, and, and maybe this is even still like a, it'd be interesting to get your feedback here, but is like, I'm studying in such a way that to the best of my knowledge, I'm um, wanting to be prepared to get every answer correct knowing that that may not be. Um, no. And what I mean by that is like, there's some topics that are, there are some topics that are easy for me because I've done a lot of it. And there's some other topics that are not easy for me because I haven't done very much of it. It's kind of complicated. And um, there's a temptation to just sort of like, just be like, I'm just going to throw that away because I don't know it and just rely on my knowledge in these other areas. Um, but knowing that, like, if I know just enough, 
that might be enough to get me in another extra couple of questions, which may or may not be the difference between passing or not. Like, I don't know. Does that make sense? Is like, Mm -hmm. I don't like I'm preparing like, I mean, cause like a, like a batter goes, they're preparing to get a hit every time they go up, but they know they're not, that's not actually what's going to happen, but they're preparing as if that, that were the case. Yeah. And also, you know, you think about batters and like, if you listen to batters, talk, like Derek Jeter, for example, if you ever heard him talk about his career and his um, approach to, to batting, um, mm-hmm. like, I think there's a parallel here. Like if we're doing the baseball comparison where it's like, you've got the areas covered that you know that you can cover. Mm -hmm. And then those other areas, you're going to work on those. um, But you might take that pitch. Yeah, totally. That you, that you know, you're not going to do much with it, Mm -hmm. you know? And so it's, it's a bit similar, you know, Derek Jeter talked to be specific about Jeter. He talked about how he looked for, fastball down the middle Mm -hmm. and he said he wasn't good enough to just react to a pitch so he looked for a fastball down the middle and he made sure that he was practiced and good enough to catch up to any fastball that came down the middle and he knew what to do with it when he got that pitch Mm -hmm. and so i mean this is you know you're talking about this a little bit. You've done a lot of practice in certain areas. And so you're going to hit that pitch every time. Mm -hmm. There are others where you're not necessarily just going to take every pitch. You might throw a swing out there. Mm -hmm. You might, you might get a hit, might get that question, Mm -hmm. right. But you might not. And, you know, I think about that too, for just like our, the way we live lives. Like we all have, jobs we have passions we have those things that we're well practiced and that we specialize in Mm, you know all other things that we can maybe speak to or we can do a little bit as a hobby or something on the side and then there's a whole bunch of stuff out there i don't know putting anything putting screens on cell phones yeah (laughs) <laughs> you know it's your first time against the ghost fork ball right there yeah totally absolutely so yeah it's interesting because um yeah thinking about that it was like um we were thinking about that say say my nemesis is the slider down in a way which you know big big nemesis for most right hand batters um is like like you said might take that pitch um, or you might, you know, you take a swing at it in the case of the test, no matter what, even if you just don't know it, you get, you, it's multiple choice. You take a swing. Um, but then it's a matter of like, okay, maybe in this topic area, I know about 60% of what I need to, what I think I probably need to know. They might hang one. Yeah, exactly. They might hang one and you get a pitch and you can't, you can't, you can't punt that pitch and say, I'm never going to swing at a slider. You got to be ready for it and to hang one in a spot. You can do something with it. You know, you got to execute. And, but there's going to be times when like there might be, there's going to be questions where it's like pitcher's pitch, you know, I'll take a hack at it. Maybe I'd nub it off the end of the bat and get an infield single, you know, but you know, so it's an interesting perspective for sure. Yeah. Well, and, and even the, the example you're giving of the multiple choice test, you're, you're just going to take a guess no matter what, anyway, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. you don't, you don't get that, um, sort of, uh, approach at everything in life. I mean, sure. Yeah. Most of life is like Mm -hmm. long, long essay. Mm Mm-hmm. And you're, you know, sort of guessing based, based on 
something that's happened maybe once or twice in your life before. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're trying to kind of put it together from, Hey, my buddy went through this one time or, you know, whatever it is, mm-hmm. you know, you're, you're trying to piece together with it, with what you have to make the best decision that you know how. And there's some of those where you like, you legitimately, you just don't know. And mm-hmm. so you're hoping that, um, you know, it tests a little bit different, but certainly in life where, you know, I messed it up on this, this time around, but now I know next time what to do with that. So it's, you know, baseball is kind of similar. Last time he struck me out, he went fastball, fastball, slider away. Like let's, you know, I can look for that pet, you know, so it's interesting. Baseball players are, are, are constantly making adjustments and they're looking for patterns. They're looking for a, a, you know, a tip sign or whatever it is, uh, tipping pitches, but, um, yeah. So you take it. Yeah. That's a mentality. I feel like I need to work on more is take the information and then apply it to the next opportunity that you get. And that's the mental game. That's the mental side of that. Like the self, the self talk, you know, it didn't, it didn't go the way you thought it would, or you hoped it would the way you prepare it's especially difficult i think when you are really preparing for something and you've put a lot into it and it doesn't go the way that you thought it should or thought it might Mm -hmm. that's when it can be the most difficult to bounce back from but that's that the mental side of it is how do you how do you how do you allow yourself the disappointment Mm -hmm. but then and then bring an end to that or at least transition out of that to where you can take something away from it a lesson learned a new connection a you know a new skill that you Mm -hmm. can walk away from and be able to uh know enough within yourself that um that what happened is a part of my is now a part of my journey yeah, that yeah, that's that, that's one of the things with like my test that I I feel like um, is kind of an interesting thing because um, I I have I feel like I have sort of the the regular the butterflies are starting you know kind of regular nerves um, and um, I feel like I'm I'm prepared even now but you know, I still got another week and a half to prepare. Um, but it's like, gosh, I really don't want to fail the test, you know, cause of, for multiple reasons, but like I, I have, yeah, it just, that's something that I, fortunately I feel like I don't let myself think too much about. It's like, I feel confident about my ability to go in and I just have to, uh, I can't, I think that's one of the things that can really spiral really quickly, no matter what aspect of life it is, is that if you anticipate failure and you, and that gets stuck in your head, um, uh, I, I get in this mode sometimes when I, like, if I, miss do something that I, that I was like, gosh, I really wish I hadn't handled that that way with my kids or whatever it is, is it really, it can really for even a couple of days sometimes like really shoot me down a little, little hole where it's like, boy, that is it. Uh, so I, I did have a question actually for you on what we were just talking about kind of learning from that and, and whatnot is, I was curious if you, do you actively like, especially in those failure moments, like take time to sit down and like reflect and like take notes or anything like that? Or do you have like a practice or anything? Cause I feel like I kind of just like, it's part of life. I'll get over it and we'll kind of move on to the next thing. And I do try to learn from it, but I don't, I don't have like an active practice of reflecting. And I know, I know, I know 
many successful people do, um, both kind of visualizing pre and then processing post. They were even talking, I was watching game two, Dodgers, um, and they were talking about uh, Shohei. And he would, in high school, he like wrote out his whole future. And then during like after games and everything, he and his dad would have this notebook and they would they would write down everything that they learned from that practice, that game, and they would write everything down. And um, that was, you know, obvi- those kind of practices sort of set, you know, a great player, or, you know, elite player into the next level above uh, like a great player. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think to answer your question, it, 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 it depends on the area of my life. I, mm-hmm. um, I, I'm not at the level of Shohei, that's for sure. Um, but when I think about my work in education in particular, um, even like basketball coaching, things like that, um, I, I spend a lot of time in preparation really visualizing how this is going to go. Okay. If I say this, this is what I'm thinking. This, my students or my players are going to respond, but what I know about them is this, how they're going to respond. And so then I play it and then I might play out a couple different scenarios and then it comes to that moment and then it goes one way or another. Mm -hmm. And um, if it goes well, um, I try and sort of keep a, a mental note or a written note of like, what about that? What did I do in that moment that worked well? And then, of course, if it doesn't work out very well, I'll make a note. Or f- oftentimes, if I'm teaching something, I'm teaching it again to a different group. And I'm okay, next time I'm going to do this this way. I'm going to put this in this order i'm going to say this and then do this um and Mm -hmm. i have found that really successful in my teaching practice and that's a very a pretty common um teaching practice for teachers is is reflecting and then right away um taking some kind of record of like what's working and what's not yeah yeah yeah, that's good. That's really good. So, I but don't know. Home, you know, at home, I'm not doing, you know, like I have a tough conversation with one of my kids. I'm not like writing down notes for the game plan for tomorrow's conversation, typically. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And sometimes it's like maybe I should because I'm, I just know I'm having, you know, I just had this conversation today, but it's come, it's coming tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Same one. <laughs> I think sure. also to your, to your point about this conversation with the kids and my experience with kids too, is even going back to the baseball conversation and where we started and the mental side of it. Um, and we can probably pick this up on another thread on another day but the mindset of I can control what I can control. Mm, yeah, totally. It is so big because there is a lot that's outside of our control when it comes to did something work out or mm-hmm. not. There's so much out of our control and we, you know, we do the best we can with the information we have. And when we know better, we do better. And, but at the end of the day, I can only control me. Yeah, that's absolutely. Yeah. And that, that is, that is a great topic. I'm looking forward to uh, unpacking that one a bit in the future as well. Um, uh, Cause there's, there is so much there. So, but um, that's it. I, I think that's going to a spot for us to wrap it up for today. Um, thanks for hanging with us. Um, you know, let us know if you got some big coming up or you've learned something about uh, not, you know, knowing that you're not going to be a hundred percent. You know, what are the things in that you're going through in life that you're learning from as you go? Uh, we'd love to hear, them. you know, we're, we're wanting to 
uh, keep growing ourselves and, you know, our families and that kind of thing. So we thank you for hanging with us. We'll be back at it uh, next week. And by the time we hear from us again, we'll have a World Series champion. <laughs>